Hey there, fellow travelers. I'm here with Mark from Walter's World. And today, what we're gonna talk about are some things that shock tourists when they come here to DC. And this video is one half of the shocks of DC. So after you're done watching this, head over to Walter's World and watch his shocks for visiting DC. So let's get started. Thing that shocks people who visit DC is that only a very small number of people who live here work in national politics. Now, there are a decent number of people who work for the government or for government contractors, but those jobs often have nothing to do with politics. Of course, there are some people who live in DC who love national politics. They read the Politico playbook every day and treat every twist and turn like a professional sport. But that is not everybody. In fact, a substantial number of people who live in DC hate everything about national politics. And it makes sense when you think about it. National politicians on DC all the time. They say things like, Washington is broken, or Washington is out of touch, or disparagingly call the city a forested wetland. The irony is that when national politicians blame Washington for all of the country's ills, they're almost always referring to themselves, the Congress. But instead of saying Congress is broken or Congress is out of touch, they blame the entire city. So for that reason, you might be shocked to find that Congress and the city of Washington, D.C. are not exactly best friends. The next thing that shocks folks who visit DC is that the city is actually quite beautiful. Now, maybe this comes as a shock because people come here with lowered expectations because of some inaccurate things they've heard. But regardless, Washington DC is an attractive city. Whether you're walking around the classic DC row houses that are in many neighborhoods, or admiring the architecture of the older buildings, or getting up close to see the monuments and memorials, or catching a stunning sunset, or if you get really lucky and wind up here at exactly the right time of year, seeing the cherry blossoms in full bloom. Washington DC really does have some spectacular views. By the way, hello, my name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and the founder of Trip Packs DC Tours. Whether you're a longtime subscriber or just found your way over here from Walter's World, Welcome! On this channel, I share my best tips, tricks, and hacks for exploring Washington, D.C. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future Washington, D.C. travel videos. With that said, let's get back to it. The next thing that shocks people is that Washington, D.C. is a big city. The population of the District of Columbia is a touch under 700,000, which is already bigger than two entire states, Wyoming and Vermont. And the Washington DC metro area population is about 6.3 million people, which is the sixth biggest in the country, bigger than the metro areas of Philadelphia, Miami, and Boston, and the entire country of Ireland. As a result, you will find plenty of big city amenities here, like Michelin starred restaurants and top-notch theater, opera, and orchestra, as well as professional sports teams from all five of the major pro leagues. And if you only plan to spend a day or two in DC on your trip, you will be shocked by how much you're not going to have time to do. And you need to budget more time than if you were visiting a small town. The next thing that shocks visitors is that Washington DC is not a state and statehood is a big deal here. Now, as a tour guide, I've pretty much heard it all. Some people think DC is already a state. Some people think it's part of Maryland. And some people think it's part of Virginia. Many people correctly know that DC is not a state, but don't really know what that means or why it's important for those of us who live here. I'm not going to go into the details of the statehood movement in this video. But if you're curious, leave me a comment and let me know, and maybe I'll do a video or podcast episode about this in the future. Anyway, this is why when you're walking around DC, you will see cars with license plates that say, end taxation without representation, and yard signs that say, statehood for the people of DC. In 2016, we voted for statehood in the general election, and the referendum passed with 86% of the vote in favor. This is something that an overwhelming majority of people who live in DC support, and you might be shocked to hear about it when you're here. 
The next thing that shocks visitors when they come to Washington, D.C. is they find out that Washington, D.C. is a city of neighborhoods and people who live here are very loyal to their neighborhoods. Now, the first time you come to D.C., you'll spend time downtown, go to the National Mall, and maybe even venture into a neighborhood like Georgetown or Capitol Hill. And that's great, but those are only a handful of the over 100 neighborhoods in DC. Now, DC is not like, say, Chicago, which has official neighborhood boundaries. So where neighborhoods actually start and end is a never-ending debate. But if you visit DC and know someone who lives here, they might ask you to hang out at their favorite spot in their neighborhood. And you might be shocked by how much they love their neighborhood, even if it's a place you've never previously heard of. Related to neighborhoods, another thing that shocks visitors when they come to Washington, D.C. is that Georgetown does not have the best restaurants. And by best, I mean award-winning. Georgetown still has plenty of great places to eat. But if you look at the map of Michelin-starred restaurants in D.C., the red markers are all the restaurants with stars, and this is Georgetown. I think that if 20 years ago you told a local that you were a time traveler and that by 2021, Ivy City would have an award-winning restaurant and Georgetown would have none, they would think you're completely nuts. Another thing that shocks visitors to Washington, D.C. is that shoes are probably the most important piece of clothing in your suitcase. When you come to Washington, D.C., you will inevitably do a lot of walking, whether that's walking around outside on a tour or inside at the museums or up and down the hills at the National Zoo. Comfortable walking shoes are a must. And personally, the piece of clothing that I think about and spend more money on than anything else. To give you a sense of scale, I do have a Fitbit tracker. And on a day when I don't give a tour, I usually do between 8,000 and 10,000 steps. That's walking my dogs, doing chores, regular stuff. On a day when I do give a tour, I usually walk between 18,000 and 20,000 steps. On a day when I give two tours, I can get up to about 25,000 steps. And my all-time record was from October 2019 a day when I gave three back-to-back-to-back tours. On that day, I clocked 33,532 steps. So you might be shocked when you come to DC how sore you are at the end of the day, especially if you didn't prepare your body and your feet for it. And hey, if you made it this far, then I highly recommend heading over to Walter's World for the other half of the Shocks of DC. And if you want to learn more about visiting DC, I mean anything and everything you could possibly imagine about enjoying your time here in DC, go to triphacksdc.com or if you're on YouTube, put triphacksdc in there and you'll see Rob and dude, this guy knows everything you want to know about DC. So do subscribe. He's awesome. And we'll wish you a great day here in uh, Washington, DC. That's right. Bye.